Hey everyone, it's Brie from the blog Brie at Last. I'm putting this video together not as a tutorial, but just to show what a beginner looks like when tackling the stone coat countertop epoxy kit for the very first time. But before I get to the creation of my countertops, let's take a little trip down memory lane so you can see where we started from. Here are a few photos from the real estate listing from back in 2011 when we purchased our home. Our house was less than a year old when we bought it. So it seemed like a shame to tear out new cabinets or countertops, even though they weren't quite our style. You can see that the countertops and the cabinets worked really well with the original owner's decor, but we wanted something a little bit brighter. Our first step was to paint the cabinets. We used Sherwin-Williams cabinet and door paint in the color Snowbound. After priming the cabinets, we painted three coats of paint, sanding after every coat except for the last. You can see the cats really helped. As you can see, it made a huge difference. We changed out the hardware and lived with our kitchen like this for several years up until 2017 when I started to get a little antsy. We had a leftover sheet of MDF, that's medium density fiberboard, in our garage that was taking up space, and I decided to put it to good use. We cut the MDF into strips and then used it as a base to attach molding to so we could essentially bring the cabinets up to the ceiling, giving them a more substantial and custom look, and then also eliminating the shadow that was created from the empty space above the cabinets. Gracie isn't quite sure about the new look. About a month later, I began work on the countertops, which is when the real fun began. In addition to the two-part epoxy kit, here are the other products that I used to get my marble finish. In hindsight, I didn't really need the gray spray paint. I just decided about halfway through that I preferred the look of the Mica powders that I had. I followed stone coat countertops instructions to a T. So after sanding my granite countertops with 60 grit sandpaper and my orbital sander, I got started by applying the bonding primer. Next, I applied my white base coat, which was also purchased directly from stone coat countertops. After allowing the base coat to completely dry, I sanded it with 220 grit sandpaper to give the finish a little bit of teeth so that the epoxy binds with it. I completed this project back in 2017 and it's now 2021. So with a few years having gone by, I can say that I would recommend using a light gray base coat to get your marble finish versus a white base coat. And the reason is all of these products are oil-based so they do have a tendency to get a yellow tint to them over time. My countertops still look gorgeous. I get compliments on them. I'm the only one who notices, but again, in hindsight, I would not recommend starting with a crisp white base coat. As you can see here, I'm just completing the sanding with the 220 grit sandpaper of my base coat. Again, this just gives the finish a little extra teeth so that the epoxy can bind to it better. If you're wondering about the occasional snores that you're hearing in the background of this voiceover, it's my dog, Gwenny. She's a Frenchie. They snore very loudly. After clearing the sanding dust with a clean paper towel, I began work on carefully prepping the kitchen, making sure I taped off the cabinets. In hindsight, I would have completely removed the faucet, but frankly, I didn't know how to. <laughs> um, and I covered the flooring completely in plastic and then covered the plastic with sheets so that my feet wouldn't stick to the plastic. Since I tinted my first coat of epoxy with white paint, this next step was probably unnecessary. But what I did was fogged on some of the gray spray paint onto my surface before applying epoxy. This is intended to add depth to your overall look, but it's more so if you're using clear epoxy instead of tinting it with a color. And here's what that fogging looks like after it's finished. So if you were using a clear epoxy coat, rather than tinting it, you can see how this would add some depth to your overall look. Next, I masked off the lower countertop to catch the drips falling from the bar area. And you'll also notice I have my paper sketch, which 
shows a rough direction of the way that I wanted my marble veining to go, which really took a lot of the guesswork out as I was doing my project and helped tremendously. Triple checking my measurements here because you want to make sure that you get the ratio absolutely perfect. In all of the tutorials I watched, the people from Stone Coat Countertops really stressed the importance of mixing thoroughly, so I paid extra attention to this. And here I'm just adding a touch of white paint to tint my color coat. This is an optional step. Some people prefer to just add color throughout the process and, and keep the epoxy clear. Um, so again, it's an optional step. I really wanted a crisp white background so that's why I chose to tint the epoxy as well as painting the surface white. Here goes nothing. Before too long, I began feeling the pressure of time and I quickly learned that using the flat edge of the trowel versus the notched edge allowed me to move the epoxy from one end of the countertop to the other much quicker. So once I distributed it, then I was able to use the notched edge to really get it nice and even so it could self-level. And then you'll see um, in a few minutes, I started chopping the epoxy before I even added my color to it. And the reason why I did that is because there's just some depressions and bubbles and using the chopping technique just really kind of evens it out even further. So that way it was ready to go once I started applying my colors. And the other tricky bit that Mike from Stone Coat Countertops warns you of is it's difficult to keep enough epoxy on the edges. So you just have to go in after everything sort of drips off and recoat the edges to make sure that there's sufficient epoxy. And here's that chopping method that I was speaking of earlier. I've edited this video to make it as short as possible. I think we're at about 20 minutes now, um, but the original video from start to finish was an hour. So that's how long just this one piece of countertop took me. Um, I, You can see that I'm torching the countertop here before I have even applied any color to it. And that's because I was just afraid it was gonna become too tacky. And by torching it, it just gives it a little bit more working time. So as you can see, the first step in creating the marble veining, I used a paint stick with some spray paint at the end of it. This is a technique that they use at Stone Coat Countertops and it works very well and it's quite easy. So here's where I start playing around with the mica powders. And that combination is just any amount of mica powder mixed with 91% isopropyl alcohol. Um, you definitely need to use 91% isopropyl alcohol. It's somewhat hard to find, but anything less than 91% contains too much water. 
And while I basically just eyeballed the mica powders when I poured them into the bottles, you want to make sure you don't use too much because I did have an issue with some of the bottles clogging and really a little bit of the powder goes a long way. Here I'm really paying close attention to the pattern that I was going for. I wanted my veins to be relatively long and to travel in a certain direction, which that is where my sketch that I had drawn up ahead of time really came in handy, but that's what I'm doing here. The dark gray mica powder also came in very handy for doing the marble veining. I found myself using that more and more on the rest of the countertop surfaces, but again here, this was the very first surface that I'd ever done in my life. I didn't practice ahead of time on a small piece of wood, nothing. So um, I was just sort of learning as I went. And what I'm about to do here is pick up my white spray paint and spray over an area that I just was not liking the way that it was turning out. So again, the white paint basically acts as an eraser, so I was able to just spray over it and start over again. I'm cringing at my concentration face in this video. It looks just so serious. Now that I've erased everything, I'm getting started again, hoping to do a better job this time around. And I'm basically doing a bit of erasing here as well by spray painting some white on my brush and just sort of breaking up some of the veining that, again, I just was not liking the way that it was turning out. I'm sure all of my fellow Office Super fans have recognized by now that that's what's playing in the background. It's sort of my go-to to have on the TV whenever I'm busy doing other things because I have seen it so many times that I don't actually have to be looking at the TV to know exactly what's going on. I'm sure many of you can relate to that. The pearl makeup powders was a nice addition to have because it just adds this beautiful iridescent quality to the finish, but it's not stressful because it doesn't really impact the veining or the overall design. It just adds just this beautiful shimmer to the finish that's not overwhelming. It's just, it adds sort of depth and dimension. Like I said, I really loved using the pearl makeup powders. So you can see here I'm using the dark gray mica powder and then sort of blending in the powder um, with my brush and sort of shaping and softening that veining. I didn't want like harsh veining, um, but that's really, it's up to the individual and you just have to kind of play around with it. Doing some more erasing here. I just wasn't liking the way that some of the veining was dripping down the side, so I just kind of softened it up a bit with the white paint.
So I'm nearing the home stretch with this one piece of countertop and starting to do my final torch work. Um, this just gives it a really beautiful glass-like finish, it smooths everything out. Um, additionally, it also moves the color around slightly, which gives it sort of this just really beautiful natural finish as if it's, you know, natural marble. Um, you do have to be careful when I was torching the edges um, or behind the sink, I held it for a little bit too long and it started to burn. So you definitely don't want to do that because it will discolor that area. It's hardly noticeable. I don't even know if I could pick it out now if I tried, um, but something to be mindful of for sure. And actually what I think I ended up doing was just painting over the area that was slightly discolored. So it's not even, like I said, I, it's not noticeable. I couldn't pick it out now and that's probably because I painted over it. And you'll notice I'm not wearing any sleeves. The reason for this is because basically every article of clothing that I own has either cat fur or dog fur or both on it. So I didn't want that to end up in my finish. But if you do end up with any imperfection, that can always be resolved through the polishing process, which we never completed, but Mike talks about that in his tutorials. I'm sort of letting the perfectionist in me get the best of me at this point. Um, I, this is the smallest piece of countertop that I did, but it also took me the longest. As I went along, everything went much faster, and I realized not to, basically not to sweat the small stuff, um, because it, it was gonna turn out much better than my original countertops no matter what, but really you can't, you can't mess it up. Yay, I'm finally finished with this one tiny piece of countertop. As I said, the rest of them went much faster. I was ready to move on at that point. Actually, I was probably ready for a drink. <laughs> um, but uh, it all worked out really well. Again, I did this project back in the fall of 2017 and we still have these countertops. They still look beautiful. So I would definitely recommend this, this product to you know, anyone who is looking to upgrade their countertops but is on a budget, or maybe you just don't want to have something permanent because trends change. I think marble is pretty timeless, but you know, I've thought about other things, other directions I might want to take my kitchen, and I like the idea that I can just do epoxy over my current countertops and, and start over again for you know, a few hundred dollars. It's, it's a great alternative to expensive stone countertops. And keep in mind, this was only the first of two coats. The clear coat went much faster and was much easier to apply. It's hard to really capture the iridescence, but you can slightly see it here. And the section to the left of the sink is right here is the very last part that I did and it ended up being my favorite. I used a different technique there and I just really liked the way that it turned out. The finish is like glass, it's so reflective, so it's sort of hard to capture it on camera because you can see here the lights reflecting in the surface of the countertop. And again, here's that favorite section of mine where I did mostly chopping and I just really liked how that turned out. And the credit card technique to remove the drips worked really well. There's a point where they're just tacky and you can kind of just like smooth them out along the underside of the countertop. And a little while back, someone asked a question on my blog about how I removed the masking around the sink. And I couldn't quite remember, but I just found this photo and apparently I used a box cutter. And once again, here's the before and the after. What a difference. And here's after we changed out the hardware. Oh, 
I did not bake these muffins. I also don't typically randomly have roses sitting in my sink. I really want to thank you all for watching and I just hope that seeing me tackle this project for the very first time with zero practice or experience working with epoxy will help give you the confidence to create some beautiful countertops. Until next time.